Ladies and gentlemen, once again, welcome to the Speakers Inc. We Speak Global Speaker Showcase Series. My name is Dwayne. Once again, a huge pleasure to be with you. And today, the distinct pleasure and honor of introducing to you Asanda Maku. She is a TV presenter. She is an actress. She is an event MC. She is a keynote speaker. And she's a mom. She has a, an incredibly bright future ahead of her. And I can guarantee you during her talk and during the conversation we have after the talk, you're going to find out so much about Asanda and how she can bring her magic to your event. Ladies and gentlemen, please help me to welcome Asanda Maku. Hi, my name is Asanda Maku. I'm a mind, body and soul positive activist. Um, solely focusing on self-development, self-love, and self-worth. Now, I don't have a 12-day program or 12-step program on life, but I do have my life lessons. And that has been my thing that has taken me through the journey of this life. I would literally always think of my life experiences as my lessons. I mean, never a failure, but always a lesson. And Today, specifically, I want to talk about finding love again. Now, I think it'd be a miss if I spoke about finding love without going through the process of getting to that point. As a woman, a single woman that is, I have had quite a lot of challenges and difficulties, obviously being in the public eye and seeing someone in the public eye that when the breakup happened, it was quite public and um, I still had to process all of that. It came to a point where people were more involved in my life now than I had even processed. For instance, when you get through that kind of public humiliation, I would call it somewhat betrayal, uh, it's tough to process it as a person, but it's even worse when the rest of the country, let's not say the world, is aware of it. And I must say, the healing process was difficult. You go through so many phases and emotions uh, that you never thought you'd ever go through. I mean, this is someone that you had lived and built your life with. And you had visions and, 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 and goals as a family. And for it to abruptly end can really knock the wind out of you. I remember feeling lost and feeling hurt. I think it almost feels as if it's a death. Like you, you know, someone just suddenly leaves your life without you even realizing how and what. But I'm going to get to that point because we do see the red flags of relationship. It doesn't just happen in a split second. There are obviously the red flags. There are moments leading to a breakup. But when it happens, no one can prepare for it. And in my case, I had to really take in what had happened. I had to cry. I was angry. And I was. I will say one thing, that crying is a, is, is a cathartic release. There's something psychological about it that really emotionally releases the hurt and pain. A lot of people to, are told to be strong. You'll get through this. But honestly speaking, feel, get through those emotions. Allow yourself to feel the pain and the hurt, um, you know, after the anger. Because initially you're angry, you feel betrayed. But once you accept that this is truly over, there's a moment of just release and, 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 and crying that is so healing. And it really gives you such a freeing feeling of having to accept that this is truly over. And, you know, do the love, Jones. Listen to the music that really takes you back to the good moments and, and allow yourself to grieve those memories and allow yourself to understand that this has really come to an end. And the work that takes after that is so freeing. I mean, just to get to the forgiving stage of this person that you love so dearly and having to forgive them is another step in its own. It's another process of strength that comes from a core being that you know only comes from having to forgive yourself first and accepting that this is over that you can forgive the next person but i remember oprah speaking on forgiveness and she mentioned the fact that when you forgive someone you're not forgiving them you're forgiving them yes but also for yourself 
You're not forgiving them for them, right? You're forgiving them for yourself so that you can free yourself from that anger and grudge that you had carried so that you can move on. Something about forgiving them is getting your power back. You're getting your power back. You're allowing yourself to say, you know what? This is no longer for me. It is not building me. It had ended and now I'm forgiving it. I'm releasing it so I can move on to the next chapter or phase of my life. And that was so profound because for me, I thought I needed to carry this thing to show that I'm not, I'm not weak. I'm not going to you know, just allow this to, 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 to break me. So I will stay angry so that they know that they really hurt me. But in fact, I was living in a miserable state. I was hurting and I knew that I wasn't ready to forgive unless I forgive myself. And I, by the time I forgave them, I felt free. And for them, that person to also come back and ask for forgiveness. I mean, not a lot of people get that, right? And it's important for you to Go through the work, not waiting for that person to ask for forgiveness or an apology. But when it does happen, it does validate and, and, and create the sense of freedom and, and, and calm and peace that we all yearn for. I think for me, it was important to know that certain things do happen for a reason, you know, um, and having him acknowledge that and having him acknowledge the fact that Yes, the way it happened was hurtful, but he felt that he needed to move on for himself and, you know, find what he was looking for. And it was not that I wasn't giving that because sometimes you feel that what could I have done more? What could I have given more of myself to make this person stay? But sometimes when you've given so much and you still don't see the answer to that, it's only them that can answer that for themselves. And you have to be able to accept that, that it's not always about what you didn't do, but in fact that it just wasn't meant to be. And now we are at a point because our reason, because I want to talk about everything happening for a season, a reason, or a lifetime. And the season had ended. It had come to an end. And the reason behind that is obviously a personal reason for them and for their growth or their need for something else, but never take that into account that it has to be about me. I mean, obviously we take accountability, no relationship is perfect, but I think when you know you have given what you could have and somewhat wasn't enough for them, then you don't take that internally and internalize it and think that you are not enough and you didn't do enough. I think sometimes when it is the end, it is exactly that. The season has ended. And the reason behind it is just, I had to meet them so I can have my daughter. I had to meet them so I can grow in my 20s because it was a long-term relationship. And now I was in my 30s. And maybe I'd become a different person to the person they had met. Because at the end of the day, you grow within a relationship. And some people prefer to stay the same. And... For you to acknowledge that actually because I'm in a different chapter of my life, this person cannot come with me on this next journey. And that's when you know that it ended for a reason. And I had to accept that and see that as a growing step and, 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 and acknowledge it as a new phase of my life. And uh, we are good now. We're in a good space. We're co-parenting. And that's only our focus is our child. Uh, the fact that they know that they've got two parents that love them dearly that are trying to be better versions of themselves by providing and being there and being just respectful of each other, regardless of what happened in the past. And um, that was very freeing. And, and, and having to move on from that really gave me a reason to believe in love again, you know, to understand that nothing happens to us, but for us, that at the end of the day, I had so many lessons in that relationships, uh, that relationship that I learned that I now know what not to do in my next relationship. So the lessons of knowing when to never put myself last to have time for me, because you really can't give from an empty cup. 
you can't keep pouring into something without it giving back. So it needs to be reciprocated. You need to feel the love back. Um, I now know what it means to communicate when you feel not seen or not heard. I now know how to be respectful towards the next person's feeling without making it about me. I have learned to be able to move on from certain things that probably would have bothered me in my 20s that don't bother me now because I've just now know I've, uh, what matters most. I've matured to really focus on the small things as opposed to the big things in a relationship. And not even sweat the small things. And by small things, I mean um, the little gestures. I think when you go through adversity in a relationship and you're used to a certain lifestyle, and when that ends, we've learned that through COVID, it really tests the relationship. So I know that what matters most is the love. We lose the love easily and base it on materialistic things instead of focusing on the love aspect and what really brought you together when you didn't have much. So those lessons have come to play in a way that I do not regret anything that has happened because I wouldn't be this person that I am today. I would have not learned the lessons that I have learned through this experience that by me saying I'm ready for love again only means that I've done the work. I've put in the work. I've taken time to heal. I have taken time to reflect. I have taken time to know who I am again. Because sometimes you do lose yourself in a relationship. You lose your essence. You lose your drive. Because you're obviously incorporating someone else. And we're not meant to be alone. I'm not saying I'm better off by myself. I'm actually saying that now being in a partner that is going to be better for me in the future will be someone that I know will support me fully and love me fully for who I am, not changing anything unless I want to change it. Because I think sometimes the mistake is when we meet someone, we think they can change us or they're better in our lives so that they can, yes, they can influence your life. They can have a better influence and, 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 and really motivate you and they should be there to guide you through your life because that's your partner but i think at the end of the day you change you for you you know so that you don't become resentful of that person when you do change because you know okay what happens now that i've changed for you you need to do it for yourself so moving forward and moving on i have a greater respect for love in general you know and i mean that unconditional love that love that whether the cameras are on, whether there's no social media, you know this is your person and you know that you can let go and be vulnerable around them and not be seen as a weakness. And the fact that the, the real greater part of knowing that this is who I'm meant to be with, that's the lifetime I'm in search for. I am one person that don't believe in, 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 in finding your soulmates. And I truly believe in that. Maybe it could be a few people that I bump on the way. I don't know when I'm going to meet the right person, but I think I'll be ready for that season and that time of my life because of the lessons that I've learned. And look, there's no formula to love. There's no perfect story. I just think it's working with who you are and attracting what you are like that's what i'm looking forward to to attract the same type of person that is goal oriented but also has that respect and love for self and you know um yes to the point where regardless of what happens in adversity and struggles and 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 and, and, and problems we face we know we're a team at the end of the day so i think for me allowing myself to love again is because of the work that I put in to heal, to release. Because I know people say hurt people hurt people. It's true. When you move on too quickly without doing the work, you end up repeating certain mistakes and doing the same things that you did in the previous relationship because you didn't take time to unpack the luggage. You didn't take time to unpack the, the 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 stuff that you carried from the previous relationship so you're coming with a suitcase full of the same insecurities the same problems that you experienced the same trust issues so 
that's why you think why am i attracting the same guy because you haven't given your time yourself time to really heal from the previous relationship and learn the lessons because at the end of the day that's why we're here to learn from our life experiences and i think for me now having unpacked my luggage is empty i'm ready to you know to pack in a new life from the, the next life chapter and the next love that i'll be experiencing to a point where I hope whoever I do attract is going to be on the same level and frequency as me. Who's not going to be insecure, is going to know who they are, what they're about, what they're looking for in life and a partner and not be phased by the outside world and what everyone is doing because every household, every home, every relationship is different. So I hope this talk will just inspire you to do the work after heartbreak. Take in time to heal. And I I, I don't want to give it a 12 day, 12 month uh, step because everyone is really different. I just believe in you going through the pain day by day but also getting to a healing phase. getting to that healing and releasing phase of your life where you're now ready to open up yourself again to someone new and knowing that you are worthy of love you are worthy to be treated as the queen that you believe that you are you are worthy to 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 believe that this is who you are and you are enough that no matter what No one is perfect but at the end of the day it's what you put in every day to better yourself and be the best version of yourself. Asanda, thank you very much for being with us today. Thank you so much for your time, for your energy, for your input. I know it was a shorter talk than usual and I really do appreciate your time, but I also appreciate the fact that you have a little bit of history in this business. I remember you from a couple of years back. I won't say how far back But I will say it's from TV. I remember the program well myself. I remember your face. You haven't changed a bit. And I'm going to ask you this. Do you find that it's something that you are still immensely proud of and you make it part of who you are going forward and you are still or are you trying to put that behind you and trying to be this new Asanda, a different Asanda, a more adult Asanda? Which one is it? You know, um thank you by the way for having me join. The thing is when you have a part of your life that made you i mean that's where i started off in terms of being a presenter being on tv so it will always be a part of me i have obviously evolved i've moved on i've grown since then i'm a whole mother now so i never try and replay the past or go back to that person in fact when people meet me they still see me as me just grown you know because i i was a presenter so i had to represent myself i was just organically authentically me So they still surprise how I'm still that person but I've just grown you know I I I'm clearly um into different things than I was then I mean that show was a tween show kid show you know uh, so yeah sure. I have moved on I'm not that asand anymore but she will always be a part of me You said something very interesting. You said you've always been the authentic asand and you've always just tried to be yourself. Here's the thing though how did you know then at that age that you need it just to be authentic even then because i think it's such a vital thing that we need to be in this business and clearly yeah. you are still that authentic human being but how did you know because one thing you can do as a youngster in the business you can fall into a trap of trying to be something that you think you need to be rather than the authentic you who told you that you needed to do that or did you just know that authentic authenticity was going to be the key can i answer that in a second They just my daughter's sure. making a noise upstairs. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I love it. But I can't I can't hear it. I can't hear it. Oh, so that's great it. though. Oh, no, is it? Not really. No. Okay. But let me just say cuz you're saying loud and loud just for her to know. Oh, Sorry. shame. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do love this. This is part of the so online sorry. network that is just the most No, please it's awesome. It please don't be down. sorry. I love this. Please keep it down on recording. You see we're talking about authenticity and being authentic and being real and being in the exactly. moment. Exactly and living in a awesome. virtual we world. Be more. I love it. <laughs> I love it. Listen, I've got the same thing. I've got a bunch of neighbors who are really noisy and I'm yeah. so I'm so afraid to go and tell them to be quiet because it's not their problem that I'm recording. It really is. Yeah. It's not their no, problem. No, they're okay. That's exactly. So oh, but that sure. that's exactly it. You know, just always be me in the moment. And I think yes. the 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 way I've, I I I've grown or like actually before then like you said I was so young. How did I understand to just be me? And sure. um 
I think that's that's how I got the job in the first place as the presenter because you know I just felt like yes we grew up around a certain way of presenting you know when you see mm -hmm. the, the way people present themselves um, you know a certain way they speak a certain way you know but I I always thought of it as well if I'm the person in front of the camera then surely I need to be me yeah. because I'm presenting something yeah. to people as myself you know not from uh yeah not from anyone else point of view but from me so what better way to present that as myself so i think i always i mean i looked at the likes of oprah as you know a show host or you know who she was just herself from the get-go so when you have people like that you're like okay that's that's who she is that's who she's representing and and, and coming forth then that's how i kept it all these years was just always being me um, and not putting on a front because you can't pretend forever. You can't be something that you're not. And, you know, that gets tiring and yeah. people see right through it, actually. Well, there are two things. First of all, it reminds me of a saying that I heard when I was very young and it stuck with me. It took me a long time to put it into practice. But be yourself because everybody else is taken. Yes, That's the first exactly. thing I learned years right. ago. And the second thing was that if you're not authentic, and this is always the part that I found the most difficult, particularly when I first started getting into emceeing, and I bet you got this, you felt the same way. If you were something other than who you really were, and you were booked again the next year to do the same gig, the problem is who was I last year? You need to remember exactly. who you were if you aren't always you authentic. So besides, yeah. it's, such a, it's such a great lesson to learn. But here's the other thing, besides being authentic, what is the most important lesson do you think you learned out of that time when you were all those years ago when you were young and you were impressionable what's the biggest lesson you were you were taught you know the biggest lesson i was taught um that time or now or since then do you mean that no, time I think then something, yeah something then. then that you kind of brought with you to the to today it was definitely not being afraid to to express myself and express my feelings, you know, whatever I feel and be true to me. I think there was a time where I remember clearly when there was uh, something happening in the country. I think it was xenophobic attacks and it was quite a heavy topic for tweens to discuss. But I remember being so clear about how it's hurting children to see people fight amongst each other. You know, aren't we all Africans? I'm also, you know, I've got all kinds of, roots in me and cultures and I, I, I'm mixed with so many different parts of Africa in me. So why are we attacking each other, you know, when we're all people? So I just remember it being a thing where really being true to how you feel in the moment and whatever is happening in the world, not being scared to use that platform to express what's going on and actually, you know, voice your feelings. And I think a lot of people mm. kind of separate the two when it's like, okay, that's work. And this is, you know, mm. entertainment. But sometimes because you've given such a platform, you have to use that platform mm. responsibly to actually voice problems that the world is facing, you know, and not shy away mm. or sweep that under the carpet just because, you know, you're there purely for the entertainment factor. But when the world is going through something, I think I've learned that also from now with using my platform is what is going yes. on around me before I even move on and pretend like there's nothing going on or I'm living in this world, mm -hmm. um, you know, where everything is hunky-dory when I know it isn't. So I think what I learned then was always like, oh, you know what, guys, we need to express this because this is trending right now. People are talking about it. Let's address it. Then, you know, just pretend like nothing is happening in our country. So that's what I learned back then to just always be current, discuss current issues. And mm -hmm. I remember my fearlessness at that age of just, you know, saying once something was wrong, it's wrong. And how do we address it? Which is exactly why you are where you are now, because I think fearlessness is one of the most important things in the business, particularly doing what you do, being in front of people, helping people get to where they need to be and where you think they could be and what their potential is. You need mm -hmm. fearlessness is one of those things. It's so important. If you, I mean, if I ask Asunda, what gets you up in the morning? What really inspires you to get up in the morning, get going and do what you do? give your 100 percent. what inspires you i mean i think it's got something to do with your with your motherhood there's a certain yes. element of you in that i can see it immediately but what really inspires you what gets you going 
like you said, um, I mean, other than the fact that she wakes me up, I have to take her to school every morning. <laughs> you know, so I'm sort of forced to get up in the morning. Uh, but yeah. that's also part of it, you know, knowing that I'm taking care of someone who is dependent on my well-being and my sanity right. and like, you know, and and yes. and really pushing um the day and and, and you know, because my my day and my feelings affect her day. You know, so yeah. it's 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 it always motivates me to just start off and wake up on the right side of the bed, basically. You know, so she motivates me. I don't know, I've got no control of the day or how the day is gonna go, but I know I can control my feelings on it and how I'm gonna handle whatever's thrown at me. You know, so that's how I handle it. And I take it each day at a time. I think I, I used to be this pandemic person where it's like, oh my gosh, you know, I need to plan ahead, I need to plan for the week and mm -hmm. The COVID, all of that taught us that we're not always in control. So you really need to just sure. handle the situation at hand and, 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 and in that moment, then try and be a step ahead, you know, because there's sure. always curveballs being thrown at you. I mean, even now, before we started, my daughter had to remind me that she had an oral for tomorrow. I'm like, are you kidding me? Okay. We're going to lose lighting and it's something she has to record. So it's like, okay, quickly, let's record that. And I've got a meeting, at, you know, I've got a, another session later. Yeah. So it's juggling those curveballs that are thrown at you. And I think the moment you overwhelm yourself too much with things that you can't control or can't handle, that's when sure. you really feel like, oh, what a, what a bad day because you were jumping way ahead as opposed to just taking it each task at a time. <laughs> it's that wonderful, that wonderful thing we do as human beings. We try and solve things that aren't even problems yet. Exactly. It's one of those, and it's, you know, you become one of those people and you're not one of them, neither am I, but those people who have got a problem for every solution. You know, yes. one of those people where they, kind of, they look at the day and go, oh, this could go wrong. That could go wrong. And it's a worst yeah. part. In fact, the pearls, the pearls of wisdom are coming from you thick and fast. I really, I'm enjoying this immensely. <laughs> It's all experience. You look at yourself, experience, yeah. Oh, it is. That's exactly yeah. what it is, though. You're so right. It is that experiential thing, and it comes through, definitely. Mm -hmm. Something that always intrigues me with somebody like yourself, you're young, you still, I mean, you've done so much, but there's still so much for you to do. Where do you see yourself in five years? We've just said we can't control what happens then, but just put that forward-thinking hat on and tell me where you of see course. Asunda in five years. You know, I'm. Uh, uh, it's crazy because I am a visual person. Like, you know, I do visualize myself at a certain point of my life. And, you know, we do have dreams. We have goals we set for ourselves. So it's also, it would be a miss to act like, oh, okay, you know, we don't really care about tomorrow. We do in the future. Um, so for me, honestly speaking, I'd love to see myself like sharing my story, but other than that, also growing as a person, as a human, and also going on this journey of life, you know, using my life experiences to inspire or inspire others that have gone through or are going through the similar situations, whether, you know, it's their relationships, uh, they, you know, mm -hmm. being a mother. Um, so in five years, I really want to see myself either having a show, a platform where I can share those, uh, those experiences mm -hmm. or, talks you know with people um, because i use that already on my platform so i think in five years i would want to have grown that and really start mm -hmm. talking to real people sharing our stories our, our experiences uh you know our journeys because i think there's no formula to life really it's it's your experience more no. than anything and your lessons that you've learned along the way that you can impact you know that's how people learn is through our lessons mm -hmm. and, and 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 the experiences so in 5 years time i want to see asanda either have a show have a platform like a, a, a you know some sort of place where people can go for inspiration or you know motivation so yeah it's it's a long journey to that but i i think you know once you put the work and 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 you're on that journey and that path you can definitely attract that so i'm not i'm not uh, too far ahead of myself but you know i'm taking it one step mm -hmm. at a time but the plans are there i think dreams and all of that can only be dreams without the goals and the execution and the planning you know you have to kind of plan towards something and that's my plan is literally just to inspire women you know couples and really just use my voice and my experience to 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 to, to, to you know to hopefully motivate others that we can do this we can get through life together and this is how i did it and yeah take it from there so maybe a book I love it. yeah so well, I really, I, I want to be able to use that. Yeah.
That's a great idea because you could talk about the industry as well, you know, being in the industry from so young as well, how things exactly. are changing. If they change, should they change? There's so many. Listen, I'm going to tell you right up front, though, there's how no way change. it's going to take you five years. No way it's going to take you five years to get there. If you, no. you've come such a long way already, it's going to take you two years. I see the show. Yeah. I see the platform. I see all of those things. You're doing those things already. So, I mean, it's fantastic. And I know you'll get to where you want to be. I mean, I've got one last question for you. And it's possibly the most important question I'm going to ask you. So, please, I need authenticity. I need honesty. I need sincerity. What is for dinner, Asanda? <laughs> Wow. <laughs> okay, well, in all honesty and authenticity and realness, we are having leftovers, okay? <laughs> it's Monday, it. I'm keeping it real. It. We had a big uh, family it. lunch yesterday, so mm -hmm. we are going to have leftovers today from it. You know, we don't waste in this house. <laughs> um, and it was really good food. I'm talking a good stew, good, like, you know, lamb stew, like everything. So why go, let that yep. go to waste? Ooh, lovely. Yeah, so I'll be there that, that's what we're having, I'll be and there it's just dessert. Yeah, yeah leftovers actually good. have a bit of taste <laughs> the next day. Actually, you know, something happens <laughs> that just enhances the flavors. <laughs> Oh, it does. It does. Yeah. Like a good curry. It's always better the day after. Exactly. Same thing exactly. With, ooh, good piece all of the meat. spices deep in the sauce, you know, everything pulls in better. And then the next day you're like, oh, okay, the flavors are there. It sounds to me like you might have a cooking show in your future as well. I listen. Nothing is impossible. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Asanda, you're a real joy. Thank you so much for being with us and giving us your time. I know you've got lots to do. The family is calling, home is calling, life is calling. So thank you once again for being with us. I hope, of course, that everybody is picked up on the real energy and the real joy that comes from within you and does, of course, contact Speakers Inc. We Speak, the Global Speakers Showcase Series that has brought you Asanda today. If you want to find out more about Asanda, how you can make her part of your particular event, all you need to do is log on to speakersinc.com, talk to Duncan, talk to Bronwyn, they'll give you all the details. If you want to watch this footage again, if you want to watch the talk again, you can do all of those things. All of the relevant links are on the website. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for once again being with us and we will see you next time. Asanda, thank you again so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. Have a lovely day. <laughs> Bye.